This is a very, very important lesson because <laughs> I can tell you, I teach all the math classes here. I've been teaching math for a long time. You do this about every day in every math class from here on out. Okay, if you haven't done it already, you'll constantly be adding terms together. Okay, and I will kind of define what a term is if, if you don't know that already. And there's another term we're going to learn, which is the number in front of a variable. Okay. So both those are important, and we're going to talk about why the rule is true. We're going to go back to something we done before with the basketballs, and I think it's good illustration for when you're combining variables. So as I've asked you before, how many basketballs are we adding here? Adding two, right? So one way we could write that is 2B. Two basketballs. Good. Good pun. I like it. And what are we subtracting? We are subtracting one basketball, right? So you end up with, here we have one basketball. Okay, it's real. It, hold on a second. Yes, in just a second, but let me explain this. Uh, it's The simple rule here is if you just take this number next to the variable, which represents how many basketballs are, and you do 2 minus 1, you end up with how many basketballs that is. That number in front is called the coefficient, and I'll give a definition of it in a second. Kind of already did. It's the number in front of the variable. But yes, what were you going to say? <laughs> okay, so, but I will answer that because that's a good question. Anyway, can, so everybody sees that this number in front is important. If you just subtract two, one from two, you get how many basketballs there are. Let's do another one. So here we have three basketballs minus one basketball. So we're taking three basketballs, which is represented by 3B, and we're subtracting one. So again, if we just take the three and we subtract the one, how many basketballs do we get? We get two basketballs, okay? Um, again, that number is coefficient. Let's do one more. If we had two basketballs here, and we subtracted two basketballs, what's two minus two? Zero basketballs, right? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and give you a definition of coefficient. I need you to write this down. Okay, so a coefficient is just simply whatever the number is in front of a variable. So it does have to be a number, okay? In fact, it's a constant number usually. Actually, it doesn't always have to be constant. Yeah, no, it doesn't have to be. There are times, for example, when you would have like AX, okay? Uh, so, so A would actually be the coefficient of X, okay? So I don't guess it's always constant, but normally... For example, 3x, we know that's a constant number, but it's just the number that's in front, okay? So that's it. So let's do some examples here with a. We've done this before, but we have here two a's, and we're subtracting 1a. So we're subtracting the what? What's that word we just looked at? Coefficients. You're not subtracting the variable. Notice the variable stays the same. Just think of the basketballs, right? You had five basketballs minus three, you still have two basketballs, right? So it doesn't become zero, it becomes when you subtract coefficients. Right. Okay, here we have two A's, and we're subtracting two A's. Two minus two is zero A's. We've already talked about the fact that zero times anything is zero. So when you have zero as a coefficient, it just becomes zero, right? I didn't mention this before in the previous lesson, but I mean this previous uh, example, one times a, why is that a? What is that called? Okay, you're multiplying by one, that's a property though. What's it called? Do you remember anybody? If you multiply by one, you end up with the same number. What's that property? Starts with an I. Identity. I identity, property of multiplication. Right. So if you have a coefficient of one, guys, you don't have to put it there. You can just write A, right? 1 times A is just A. 1 times X is X. One more. Sometimes when you subtract the coefficients, you end up with a negative number. For example, we have 3 A's here, subtracting 5 A's. Well, 3 minus 5 is negative, right? You can have a negative coefficient, okay? A coefficient can be a decimal, as we'll see in, a, in some examples here. Coefficient can be a square root. It can be a pi, okay? It doesn't have to be a whole number or an integer. So two steps here. 
for when you're combining coefficients. You will combine them first, and then if you have any simplification due, you'll go ahead and do that. And uh, there's another way to explain this rule, which is kind of like re... We've already looked at this uh, slide, but why is 3a plus 2a equal 5a? Well, another way to explain that is to break it down again. Like this. How, if you have three A's, looks like that, right? And if you have two A's, so how many A's is that? Exactly. So instead of having to break it down every time, all you have to do is just add these two numbers up because that's how many A's you have. Pretty simple. Or X's or Y's or whatever. All right, so first example. 10x plus 5x. Good job. So we're going to add the coefficients, which is the first step. Leave the variable the same. I have seen that before, okay? I've seen somebody put 15x squared. They said, oh, well, there's two x's there, so I'm going to put a squared there. No. It doesn't work that way, right? If you were to break it down again, you'd have 15 total x's. That's it. So you do nothing with the variable. Number two, 2x minus 8x. Be careful. Negative 6. 2 minus 8 is a negative number. Okay, so you're going to combine the coefficients. If, you, if it helps, okay, there's a plus there, right? So plus 2 minus 8 is negative 6. Number 3. It's okay if we have decimal coefficients. So we have 0.5c plus... Good, 3.2, and then the c stays the same. Most of the time, c is a constant number, but it can be a variable, just so you know. Uh, all right, let's do three. You can combine three terms, no problem. First step is just to combine these three. So it's three minus seven plus two. Now, if it helps you guys, you don't have to do it this way. You can do it in one step, but if it helps you to break the first one down, and then do the second one and just drop it down. That's fine, too. That would not be 6. Nope, because we have negative 4 plus 2. Negative 2. You remember, you're just adding the coefficients. And a negative 4 plus 2, if you're looking at the number line, you don't quite reach 0 yet. You're still at negative. Okay, or you could have just done 3 minus 7 plus 2, which gives you negative 2. So you can break it down if you want, but you don't have to. This one I would probably recommend breaking each of these down. So we got 12b minus 2b minus 3b plus 4b. So first of all, what's 12b minus 2b? 10b. And then um, be careful about this because this is a negative 3 and this is a positive 4. Yeah, so that's plus 1b. All right, I need to actually reiterate exactly what the mistake can be there. Everybody needs to listen here. Well, actually, I want to ask you guys, why is that not minus 7? I mean, it's minus 3 plus 4, right? Because the coefficient of b here... The, okay, right. The coefficient of b is a minus 3. The coefficient of, of this b is a plus 4. Kind of hit it there. Okay, so you can't apply the negative to both of those. It only applies to the minus 3, and that makes a plus 1. Okay? Now we can combine these two to 11b, and that's going to be our answer. So, yeah, once you combine the coefficients, make sure it's simplified, which means if it's 1 times the variable, it just becomes that variable. In fact, we'll do one of those, and then we'll do a zero, and then we'll be done. Okay, so let's just do that just for the sake of 2x minus x. All right, so first of all, we talked x. about this before. Yeah, so what is the coefficient of x if it's not there? Yes. Good. 
Okay, we already talked about that. If you have a basketball, right, you have one basketball. If you have an X, you have one X. So now we can combine these two. Becomes what? Two minus one is? Okay, and the second step is to simplify that. Right. One times X is just X. So that's going to be our answer there. So anytime you don't have a coefficient, you can add a one there. Okay, and it works just the same. In fact, it's important to do that. That way you can be consistent and combine the numbers. Okay, let's do this one. Let's do x plus x minus 2x. Zero. This will be the last example. Okay, well, what's the coefficient of the first two x's? Zero. Uh, okay, yeah, I, I, I see what you're saying when you add them. What's the coefficient of this? Zero. One, okay. So we got 1 plus 1 minus 2, which is what? 0. And 0 times anything is 0. So that's the final answer for that.